Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, and welcome. My name is Kim Ricketts, and I manage, along with Kirsten Wiley, the Microsoft Research Visiting Speaker Series. Thanks for coming today. I have to say, first of all, I love my job. I love my job. I get to invite smart and interesting and fun people to Microsoft campus, and, um, and people that might just push us in some ways, and, and of course, today, um, someone that can help us laugh. But, <laughs> and has had us laughing at both ourselves and, and other people and companies for over a year now. So today I'm pleased to welcome Daniel Lyons here to discuss his new novel, Options, The Secret Life of Steve Jobs. And also, of course, to discuss with us his, um, the history of his blog, which started in 2006 um, and ended, and it not, didn't end, but it's morphed into something different now that he has been outed by the New York Times. Um, as a journalist, <laughs> we'll get into that in the Q&A, but um, anyways, now that he no longer can write the blog anonymously, um, he, which he was also going to do the book anonymously, but clearly um, he had to, to come clean with who he is and what he does. But I've invited him here to talk about how he thought of doing the blog, how he actually captured or we think captured um, Steve Jobs' voice so perfectly. And um, considering the fact that you know, he's never lived in the Silicon Valley, he's never been inside Apple, interviewed Steve, I think um, everyone's really enjoyed the voices that he's used. So I'm thrilled to have Dan here. We're gonna, he's going to talk a little bit about his path to the book and the blog, and then we'll open it up for Q&A, and he's happy to sign books for people afterwards. So Dan Lyons, fake Steve Jobs. Thank you. I, I, I'm a, a print journalist and, and uh, not a public speaker, or a, so bear with me. Um, thank you, though, for having me here. And um, I, I haven't been, I've only been to Microsoft once before in 1988 when I was at PC Week and um, did a story about, we came out and spent a few days and interviewed Bill Gates. and. Um, I asked him a really stupid question, and he told me what a fucking idiot I was, and, and, uh, and I thought, like, wow, this is great. I love this company, you know? And, um, and it was just, you know, ask a stupid question, and bap, you know, they don't tolerate it. It was great. Um, and, um, and the gist of the story, I think, was that we went back and we said, Microsoft is going to make applications. They're going to make, you know, a word processor and a spreadsheet, and huh, that'll never work, you know? And, um, and I think the question I asked him was something like, do you really think people are going to buy like Excel instead of one, two, three? And he was like, "No, we don't. That's why we hired all these people, and you know, we did it." And, yeah, it's like, really, you got us. Damn it, PC Week. But um, and the the woman, I, it was two of us, and the woman I came with, um, we wrote the story together, and she like turned around and like seriously, like in a week or a month, she was a Microsoft employee. Like she just flew right back and like joined Microsoft, and she now. I was telling Charles this last night. She now lives in Portland and like does philanthropy and I'm selling a fucking comic book about Steve Jobs so you know um, um, it's you know yeah one of those life choices where you think yeah and I remember thinking that's a risky move man going to Microsoft I don't know 1988 mm, you know um, this is such is life so um, um, I guess I'll talk a little bit about the blog and uh, how it started. I, I, I tend to think of it as like, it's just like this practical joke that kind of got out of hand and like got out of control and it got to be, you know, too big and I realized it at some point like, oh God, like, you know, it's, it's, now there's people reading this and, um, and I'm going to get caught, you know, and um, for a long, long time it was like that. Um, the other more interesting thing I think is, is that I, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed to see how many people are here and, and I'm really glad. but. Um, when I first put on the blog that I was going to come talk at Microsoft, first, like, Microsoft was the first one that called. Like Apple, you know, I'm still waiting for the phone to ring, right? But, uh, <laughs> but Microsoft called me right away, and I realized, like, they get it. Like, they get the joke. And, and in fact, I was, even before that, I was getting email from uh, 
certain people at Microsoft who kind of thought I was probably fake Steve, like Charles and Frank Shaw. And um, um, so, like, they got the joke. Anyway, the readers were appalled. Like, the, the, the blog readers were just, some of them, I, I was amazed at the comments, like, you know, how can you go to Microsoft? You know, and it's like, well, I'm not really Steve Jobs. You know, <laughs> you do get that, right? Like, you know, I'm, I'm a, you know, it's made up, right? And, um, <laughs> and like, and the other ones were like, they, they couldn't believe that Microsoft would have me up. Like, they kind of thought, like, why would they do that? And I was like, do you? I don't want to put this on the blog because it ruins it. But like, I guess they don't get that. Like, the joke is on Apple, right? Like, they really don't, you know. <laughs> and I thought, like, that's amazing. You've been reading this for a year and a half, and you still haven't got that. Like, that's what the joke is, right? And um, but then I realized these are people who like waited outside for a phone, right, for a week, right? And it's like, and there was no shortage, right? I mean, I was thinking, like, that's amazing, you know? Like, I, I, you could walk in Saturday and get a phone, but no, let's, let's camp out, you know, that's great. So, um, and, and I, I have to say up front, I'm a big Mac fan. I really am. I, I really do like Macs, and, and uh, you know, I'm, uh, but, but I, I wouldn't wait outside for a phone. And uh, um, the other great, the even better paranoid theory, and I don't know if any of you work or touch upon the open source world, but I do, as my day job at, at Forbes, I cover a lot of that stuff, and I'm hated. I'm like, like the most hated, after Maureen O'Gara and a couple other, Rob Enderley, and then there's me. But, um, so, and they hate me. They, they, it's like around the bend. And um, so as soon as I got outed, the Grok Law theory was that, aha, the whole fake Steve blog was a Microsoft black ops operation. <laughs> that Microsoft had funded this, they had paid for it, and if you went back and looked through all the posts, you could see where whatever Microsoft was talking about that month, Fake Steve was also talking about it. Mm -hmm, you know, and I, I used People Ready, and like early, way, way, a long time ago, I made fun of People Ready as a slogan, saying, you know, somebody was trying to think of a new, I think IBM was trying to think of a new slogan. They were like, People Ready, no, uh, on demand, no, you know, and uh, so they said, ah, see, that was Fake Steve's crafty way of doing Microsoft's bidding, and they also thought that. Um, that the book deal, this is PJ Krakla, that the book deal was probably set up by Microsoft as a way to launder money to me through an intermediary, right? And, and I was like, like tinfoil hat time, right? And I was like, and all I could think is like, if that's true, right, then you, you bastards didn't pay me very much. And, and I was like, because I got a really lousy book deal, like really, really bad, and I know you could afford more. And, and, uh, and I wanted to write to Grockla and tell them now, but I think, no, then they'll think it's an admission. He's admitted it, he's taking money from the Borg. So I, um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm apparently I'm a, I'm a Borg shill. And, and this is all being videotaped, so it's going like all over. I'm sure they'll find this. This will be up there somewhere. So um, I'm not going to say anything more about that. I really, I, would, I want to, but, um, but I don't. But, however, I do have a theory that the fake Balmer blog is actually a Borg operation. And, and it just, because first of all, I think it's Dvorak doing it. And we all know you guys are paying him, right? And, and also, it just smacks to me of like the kind of thing, don't take this the wrong way, all of my dear friends in Microsoft PR, but it's the kind of thing that maybe the Edelman would think of. But, um, but which is that like, well, Apple has a fake blog. We need a fake blog. We're not cool enough, you know? Like, we want to be as cool as Apple. Um, but, um, so I really do actually, I, I did start thinking, because like, I couldn't figure out, like, this. it's really well done, too. The Bomber blog has nice graphics, and it's clearly somebody who knows what they're doing, unlike me, where it's just, you know, on Blogger, and it, sh and it shows. But um, I was telling Charles last night that the reason I think the Bomber blog doesn't work, and the reason, uh, as well as my own does, right, um, is that the, 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 the thing about Jobs that makes him write for parody, right, is that he has, he presents one face to the world and it's different than who he really is, right? That's why Hillary Clinton is a great target for parody too, or uh, any number of people. Bill O'Reilly, right? I mean, um, but you have, you know, Jobs does the whole zen and the peace and love and thing, but you know, behind the scenes, he's this monster. He's this terrible manager. He throws tantrums and slams stuff. The thing about Bomber is, like, like I was telling Charles, if you go out on stage and do a monkey boy dance, you can't parody that guy, right? He's already parodied himself, right? Like he's, he, is, he is just what he is, right? He's intense, right? He's got the sweat running down his shirt and, you know, and, and like, you know, how can you make fun of him? You can't. He's like, you know, um, except that now he does this thing where he says that he says he didn't throw the chair. I got to interview him a couple years ago, and this is how you get bomber. Even, even like at Forbes, they're like, you'll have five minutes with him in an SUV driving around New York, right? So we're like driving around the block, right? And I get to ask him my questions with a notebook. And I asked him, you know, didn't you really throw the chair? And you could tell he was looking like, Jesus Christ, let go of the chair thing, right? But he said, he swears he didn't throw the chair. 
And I told you, I actually liked Microsoft better when you did throw chairs and when, when you admitted to it. I thought you were more fun then, you know? Um, because I, and I still believe he did throw the chair and he's just... Um, <laughs> um, anyway, um, to, to, to be somewhat writerly, I mean, I, I think, you know, the, the, the book is, is kind of a piss take on, on jobs, right? It's sort of, it started off really just that way. Um, but I also, in a somewhat more serious way, I kind of see Jobs and Apple is this almost like a metaphor for something kind of scary in our culture of this kind of narcissism and pretentiousness and preciousness and this idea that consumer electronics are imbued with some kind of spirituality and this meaning and they can, you know, restore the sense of childlike wonder to your lives instead of just being, you know, a zoon, right? And, um, and no, I don't mean, no, I mean, no, I mean, I mean, it's just, I mean, a Zune is a Zune is a Zune, right? It plays music. I mean, no, Microsoft doesn't tell you it's going to cure cancer or grow your hair back. It, it plays music. That's what it is. It's a fucking music player. Put your music on it. You listen to it, right? It's not going to, you know, you're not going to dance around in silhouette or anything, right? But like, uh, and, but I don't get this idea. That, you know, this gets back to the people waiting in line for the iPhone. Like this idea that like people define themselves by and who they are, and they did seem to derive meaning and spiritual you know, like significance from, from. Electronics is really bizarre, and um, and I think that's a, something I tried to tackle a little in the book without, you know, without making it not unfun, not not funny. So uh, I mean, the primary thing is just to have have fun. Um, so a little background on the blog, and I'll try to be fast. Is that um, basically in '05 I wrote a story for Forbes called "Attack of the Blog," saying you know, uh, and Frank Frank was quoted in, in saying that um, you know. There was this way people could use blogs to create this echo chamber and repeat the same lie among five people and make it look like it was real and you could, you know, smear an analyst or smear a company or short a stock. Um, but of course the blogosphere went nuts and said, you know, oh, Forbes hates blogs and this guy hates blogs. It was really got a very bad reception. Um, and um, I decided that after hearing, you know, enough people complain, I thought, like, you know, they're kind of right in a way that, like, you know, I'm working in print. Print is kind of flat. The, new, the saying in print now is flat is the new up, you know, for, for print advertising. And we're all happy because we're only down 2% this year. Woo! You know? And um, so, uh, you know, if you're in your 40s and you're working in a business where they're celebrating being, being down 2% this year, you start thinking, fuck, right? So I thought, well, I got to learn, you know, the internet. So I, I tried to get a transfer to the internet side at Forbes. But they're like, no, we don't want old print idiots, you know, we don't want, no, you guys, you don't get it, you know, so I thought, well, I'll do it on my own, so I'll learn how to do a blog, and I, I started a, a, a WordPress blog about open source, so I could, like, use it as a sponge to suck up all the, the hate mail and all the energy that was coming to Forbes, and I could redirect it there, and, you know, and print all these, like, it became entertainment on its own, and then um, I had a family blog on TypePad, and then I did a blog one, I'm like, well, what am I going to write? I mean, literally, you're sitting there looking at, you know, if you have a blog, like, this is white space, and um, I thought if I write about what I think, nobody cares, you know, no one will read it. So then I had this idea from reading Private Eye, this English humor magazine where they always do a, a, a secret diary of some famous person like David Bowie or, you know, John Major or something. Um, and I thought, oh, Jobs, you know, it'd be perfect, you know, because he's, you know, the early ones were really just like smoothie jokes and yoga and stuff, you know. Uh, but, uh, but okay, I started doing it, and I sent links to a couple people, friends of mine, and I didn't tell them I was writing it. I just said, hey, look, I found this. And, and then it just kind of spread virally. And, um, and <laughs> does that seem dishonest or something? I don't know. Like, um, um, I know it did violate the IBM blogger code of conduct, but I, I didn't feel I had to abide by that. So, um, and Forbes didn't have a blog policy, so, you know, um, their problem. And um, so I did it for about six weeks, and, uh, you know, I started getting a few comments, and I just shut it down because, like, okay, I figured it out, haha. Ha. And then all these people wrote in. Somebody put it back up, and they wrote in. This was, like, in August of 2006. And they said, oh, what happened to this blog? Blah, 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 yeah, yeah. So I said, oh, I guess there's people reading it. So I, I launched it up again. And um, um, when I started up, again, I realized, like, there are a couple interesting things. Like, I could, I could actually cover news. I, I, I could do the jokes, and I could do uh, you know little riffs on jobs or what's happening. But I, to get my material, I started seeing like what's happening in the news this week, and then I realized like I could actually start covering you know tech news in this way that was like um, in some ways more honest than what I the way I cover it in Forbes. Like I could say things on this blog that I could never say in, in Forbes, even though they're true, you know, and. 
and I think that's when people started responding to it. People started reading it going like, you know, holy shit, like, like really simple things, but like, you know, Sun Microsystems is run by a lunatic who's over his head and he's driving it into the banks, you know, like, you know, like, right? It's true, right? Or Robert Scoble is a buffoon, like, whoa, you know, like, you know, you could say it, you could just say it, right? Uh, it was amazing. And people were writing like, holy crap, who is this? You know, it's like, even better. People would start forwarding them to me saying, have you seen this? And I was like, no, ah, that's wild, yeah, you know. Um, the, the, other, the other motivation I had was, again, not to bash on Scoble, but let's bash on Scoble. So, um, you know that book, uh, Naked Conversations, right? Which, when it came out, I thought it's just like the stupidest idea I had ever heard in my life. Like, absolutely stupid, stupid idea that, like, we should just tell everybody everything about our business. You know, so when some, some supplier in Asia, you know, screws up and has a fire or, you know, we're getting screwed over there, let's tell everybody. Like, no, you know, you don't want to do that. But, um, but I thought, like, and, and then all these CEOs started blogging sort of in that, pretending to be in that spirit, you know, like Jonathan Schwartz is going to tell you the truth until, until John Doerr leaves the board. And then suddenly, oh, John Schwartz has nothing to say about that. You know, just wish you well, you know. Um, so I thought, what if some CEO did do a blog, but he, like, totally went off the rails, like, and the PR couldn't stop him. And, and you know, and, and having met, like, you know, Bill Gates in 88, and having a tiny idea of like what these guys are really like, because like, you know, and you know what the jobs is like, right? I was like, oh my God, that would be hilarious. Like when the journal does a bad story about him, he can be like, well, yeah, 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 the channel. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and um, so it sort, of, it sort of started taking off from there. And um, so there's this mix of news. And then I started realizing, I, I'm also, I wrote a couple, uh, I published a couple books of fiction before I went to Forbes. One was a collection of short stories and the other was um, uh, uh, a novel called Dog Days. And I was trying to write books even after that, even I started first. I wrote like two other novels and I kept them in a drawer. They were kind of serious and, you know, this didn't work out. And I first was thinking, this is like a total waste of time. But then I realized like it's sort of becoming kind of like fiction. Like these cast of characters were growing like Larry Ellison. And the, I think the Larry Ellison on the blog and in my book, I, I don't think he has... I don't really, I've never met Larry Ellison. I don't know if he's anything, but he became, in my mind, like this fictional character, and I could do whatever I want with him. Same with Jobs, you know what I mean? Like, I, I think of Jobs now as his fictional character, not as a, a real person. So, um, and all these guys, Bono and um, Al Gore and, you know, uh, Sh uh, Eric Schmidt. So, uh, Sergey Brin and his Uncle Fetch, and I started inventing all this crazy shit, right? And I was like, you know, and uh, like Sergey had the big truck, so he was driving around with like the 20 girls from Stanford in there and the trapped in the box, you know? And, uh, because I was thinking, like, if I were Sergey, how would I live, you know? Like, basically, that was it, you know? That's what I would do. I wouldn't work, you know? I, 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 I pretend to work, which I think what he does. I, I, you know, the Legos, you know? I love, I love the fact they always have the Legos in those fucking Google stories. Anyway, um, uh, anyway, and the other thing is, that, like, none of these guys talk to Forbes, right? So there's nothing to lose in it for me, because they all hate us, right? As one PR person told me recently, she said, you know, my, my clients pay me to get them into Fortune, and they pay me to keep them out of Forbes, right? Nobody ever wants to deal with us. So what the hell? Apple hasn't talked to us in 20 years, you know? They don't buy ads, so uh, there really wasn't any risk there. But um, uh, it became this weird hybrid of, like, fiction and news and, you know, making fun of Steve Jobs. And, and, and it tapped into, I think, the Apple fanboy base was, like, really into it. And they were, you know, they got it kind of whipped up. And then I got lucky because Apple was in the news a lot and, you know, the iPhone happened. And so then the company keeps doing better. And um, then the SEC thing happened. And I was like, um, not to be cynical, but I was like, you know, thank you, Jesus, thank you. Like, like, you know, oh, Lord, there is a God, you know. Like, I've got a blog, and he's being hunted. This is great, you know. So, um, and, um, and um, I still think, I still think they're after him. I don't think they're going to just let that go. But, um, or to put it another way, I don't get the defense that says, okay, so they have Jerry York, paragon of virtue, and, um, and Al Gore do the investigation, and they say, okay, so, yeah, yeah, the stuff happened. Yep, Steve, he benefited. Yep, Steve was the CEO then. So, you know, no problem, right? Okay, good, yeah, let's move on. We don't see any connection there. And, uh, uh, and even I don't think that makes any sense. I can't see that some U.S. attorney is going to think that. But um, I think they also, in the same thing, may be scared of him. So, I don't, you know, honestly, you know, they may not want to tangle with him. And because and, if, you, if, you, if you pursue that case and you lose, you know, it looks pretty bad. Um, so, um, 
anyway, I, I don't know how it's going. So the thing started growing. By December, I had like 90,000 uniques, and I couldn't believe it. I was like, holy crap, like 90,000 lunatics read this, you know, around the world. And they were all over the world. Like they were, you know, Russia. I, I, one time I threw in, my wife uh, speaks Russian, and I, I threw in uh, the, the director of Central Asia for, um, from, for Apple. I made up a name, Yuri, and a, a very dirty word in Russian for his last name. And... Um, <laughs> And I don't know if there's some Russian speakers here, but I won't say it in public because it's so bad. Like even you know, and I got all this email from people saying, "Dude, do, you, do people in Russia read this blog? You idiot! You know we know what that word means." And I was like, "Really? There's people in Russia?" And like now there's a lot of readers in India, and um, I guess everywhere you'd expect. Um, and I still wasn't making any money. You know, it's like still just you know, <laughs> like, um, um, which not to be crass, but you know, after a while you're like, you know, my wife's kind of like, Whoa, "What are you doing?" And um, so I thought, well, how can I, you know, I could try to sell ads, but it's hard to sell ads when you're anonymous, you know? You follow up with a voice saying, would you like to buy ads? Blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, no, you know, like that, that wasn't working. And, and um, um, so I thought, well, you know, the last resort to sell a book, right? So, um, and all the book publishers were terrified. They were all, uh, almost all of them thought, no way, we're not going to piss off Steve Jobs, right? And they're all still hoping to get his biography if, if he ever writes one. So the big publishers all were like, no way, we don't want to do that. And they all knew what had happened to Jeff Young's book with Wiley where they threatened to, I don't know, sue him or something. And, and, um, but uh, finally one publisher was just small enough and like insane enough and they were like, oh, great, we don't care. We, they had their lawyers look it over and the lawyer said, no, you can't do it. And the guy said, okay, we'll do it anyway. And, uh, <laughs> and so they, they, uh, they went ahead and um, I mean, we had to, you know, be careful about a couple of things. But, but basically, it's not libel in the sense that, you know, we know it's all made up, right? And it's, it's all fake. Um, and uh, the other risk, so that was fine. So I got some time. That was January. I figured I'd write the book and try to get it out by the end of the year. Um, and the book really is different than the blog in the sense that there's some material in the book from the blog, but it's about 80 or 90 percent of it is new, and it's really a contained novel about you know, this story of Jobs being hunted by the SEC and what, I tried to imagine what it would be like in the boardroom when they first had their first meeting about like, holy crap, we're in trouble, you know, and, and how they would dodge that bullet and how they would throw Fred Anderson under a bus and all this kind of stuff. And um, there's a great, I won't tell you anyway, there's a couple of scenes in there about that. So it's, um, it, it's very cynical. In, and then there's like little asides about, you know, my night with Bono and, you know, and some of those like parts, parts of the Bono thing are like, were front, in the blog originally, the part about Bono smashing into someone else's car. Um, but the rest of it is a whole night of them carousing in San Francisco, and, um, and th that was one that the lawyers at the publisher had a question on the, on the, on the libel side. They were like, I get this like, list of questions, and one of them was, is there any evidence that Bono has drive, been driving drunk? And I was like, I don't know, because he's hammered driving down 101, smashing into people on purpose, right? And I was like, I'm pretty sure that's just made up, you know, and, and Bono now owns half of Forbes, or almost half of Forbes, which is... Um, made it a little, that was another risk factor for me was, I'm writing about this, I'm making fun of Bono, and then like they announced one day, Forbes announces that, oh, Elevation Partners just bought 40% of our company, and Bono's one of my owners now, like, oh, all right. Um, <laughs> uh, so I was like, shit. So, which leads me to the next point, I, I, I thought, you know, I'm going to lose my job. So in January, right about the time I was doing this book, I called this woman who was uh, a lawyer, a, 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 you know, an IP lawyer, and I asked her about it, and um, she was like, are you out of your mind? You have to shut that down. You'll get fired, like, that's, you're, you're dead. Don't shut it down now. So I posted a thing saying, "Oh, my lawyers told me I better shut down the blog." Blah blah blah. And um, all these people wrote in, like Wired wrote in, wanting me to, "Oh no, don't shut it down. Do it here." And then here's this is a great turning point. I get an email from the publisher of Forbes, Rich Carlgard, and he says, "I'm Rich Carlgard, and he's a friend of mine." He's like, "I'm Rich Carlgard, the publisher of Forbes, and I don't know who you are, but we'd like you to come and write a column for Forbes.com." And blah blah blah. blah right? <laughs> so like, you know, like right? Because so, you're a genius and blow it. Meanwhile, I've been in Forbes like trying to get a raise that week, and they're like, "Fuck you, you idiot! Get out of here!" Right? So, no, you can't have a raise. So, so Rich Gargar calls and says to me, "You know, we, we, you're a genius. We love you, blah blah blah." So I thought, "What should I do?" So I wrote back and I was like, "Well, how much would that pay?" You know? And he's like, "And he's like, well, we'll have to talk about the money later." So we actually, I wound him up for like about a month. I went back and forth, and then decided just like screw with him. And then in the middle of this, I get another email from Elevation Partners, who are the guys who own Forbes separately, and they said, you know, I work at Elevation Parties, we're a private equity firm in the Valley, and we think this blog could be the biggest thing since sliced bread, and we want to invest in it. <laughs> so I'm like, wow, this is great. So I had my agent call this guy, and like went back and forth with him a few times, and he set up a whole dinner, we're going to have a dinner in Boston with fake Steve, blah, 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 but then finally I told them, and at that point, I remember thinking, I told my wife, like, I think, I don't know if I'm going to get fired, or 
or what? I don't know which way it's going to go. And I decided, like, nah, who gives a shit? You know, whatever. Like, right, you know, <laughs> fine. It was, it, was too, it was too far along then. So I told them. And they, they were like, oh, that's, you know, that's great. And they, of course, then they realized, like, oh, we don't, even, we don't have to pay you extra? That's even better, you know? Like, <laughs> you know? Uh, um, uh, so, so it didn't work out that well for me in the long run. But, um, <laughs> uh, um, um, and, and they were good about letting me write the book, and you know, uh, they finally now sort of put up a little connection to Forbes on the blog, but they're sort of leaving it alone, which is also good. They don't, you know, edit it. They don't get involved. They're kind of like just mm, do it, and like they don't want to look. They don't want to see, you know. Uh, I told them once that I compared uh, Balmer to Bill Ford, and then called Bill Ford a bad name, and um, and they were like, oh, <laughs> you, know, you know, oh no, don't do that. And um, but so far, you know, honestly, and, and whereas Wired, when Wired was sponsoring the blog for a few months, and, and they weren't even, I wasn't writing, for, I mean, they were just an advertiser. They would actually call and be like, you know, I think you're picking on Tim O'Reilly too much today. You should lay off of that. Like they were, but Forbes really, really, they really don't care. And I think they really want to be like, they like that it's edgy. They like that, you know, people in the Valley read it where, you know, nobody reads Forbes. But, um, <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> this is on camera. I forgot. Um, 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 <laughs> Um, so no, they're, they're happy. They're, I think they're happy about that, and they think it's funny. And, and Tim Forbes told me something funny, which is that he thought his father Malcolm would love this. Because I said, dude, I don't get that this fits your brand at all. I don't know. You know. And he's like, look, you came. My father like, was, you know, he would love this stuff. That you know, he's flying around in balloons and motorcycles and stuff. He would believe me. He would get this. You know. So I said, okay, fine. Um, another funny thing that happened when I was doing the book is that. I started to develop this weird sympathy for Jobs, right? And I, I started to kind of like him and to like take his side in things. It was a little weird experience, you know? Like by the time I got through to the end of it, I really was rooting for him, you know, to, to win. And I won't tell you the ending because there's a, kind of a twist of an ending and it's very absurd. But um, in the book, he gets away with it. Um, but um, uh, I don't know in real life if he will. Um, I guess I should take questions. I've been talking for too long. Um, and some of this other stuff I can cover. In in, uh, in in question and answer. If you have you know Q and A's to do, I can do that. It might be more fun than just listening to me rant. So um, go ahead. Any any? Oh, sorry. Okay. Thank you. And I also have had to point out before I had to point out to my blo uh, blog readers that you know when they complain about becoming a Microsoft, I say you don't get it. Like Microsoft has a much better sense of humor than Apple does. You know, you wouldn't think it, but um, well, I would. Think, people in the industry, I think, would think it. But like, you know, the average Apple person, you know, thinks this is the Death Star. But anyway, okay. So uh, I'm sorry. Questions? Any any questions? Uh, yeah. We know Frank Steve's opinion on the hundred dollar laptop. Is that your opinion too? Yeah, I, I just made. I, I uh, you see, that's the other problem. Sometimes I, I I veer into things that are, and even early, and that's how I got busted, to be honest, because I was veering too much into the open source stuff, and people who knew me were like, dude, you're fake, Steve. Come on, like nobody else knows. Cares about Red Hat's earnings, you know, um, and uh, but you do, psycho man. You know, like okay, um, yeah. No, I think I think the hundred dollar laptop is crazy. I think I think it's a. I, I actually think it's this huge train wreck, and no one will call it. An, and now Negroponte is going to speak at CES. He's going to be a keynote speaker at CES. It's like if you just fuck up hugely enough, like you get to go to CES, right, and and be the keynote speaker. I mean, I just can't believe this thing. Like nobody's ordering it. I mean, I had a demo last. I don't know when it was, last. Anyway, months ago, but it was like you know a month from ship date, and uh, so they said, "Yeah, come on in. We're going to be shipping in six weeks or something." I said, "Okay," and they said, "Well, it's going to be like this. Now this button is going to do this. It doesn't do it yet, but it's going to do that." And like this over here is going to be like, "No, let's see, the software isn't quite finished." And I was like, "You're not going to ship this in six weeks." Oh yeah, yeah, no, it's okay. We're, we're working on it. I was like, "Man, you guys just like they just don't even get it at all, you know?" And and um, I'm amazed at the the slack that a project like that will get. Um, I guess because they have good intentions and, you know, I can imagine, you know, the same kind of thing from Apple would, you know, would never be taught. The same thing from you guys, geez, you know, I mean, you know, uh, you'd be hue and cry. But no, I, I think it's, and I may be wrong, maybe the thing will end up being a huge success, but I just think it's a disaster and it was poorly planned and it was done. I think they should have had more participation from people who had actually built and shipped software and, and, and computers and, and uh, had some, you know, experience. Anyway. And I, I imagine Jobs feels the same way. I can't imagine that Jobs looks at that and goes like, oh, that's beautiful, you know. <laughs> uh, what a wonderful piece of machinery, you know. But uh, any, anybody? Yes. Uh, after you were outed, did you uh, pull anything from the book? Uh, uh, um, 
That's a really good question. I'll have to get back on that. No, um, <laughs> no. I, 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 I was in the, still in the process of, of, of going through drafts with an editor. So I mean, like whole pages were coming out, and you know, stuff was going on like that. But no, there was nothing where I thought like, oh, now, because I knew, I knew like months ago, like I'm going to get out of it. I knew it was going to happen. So I, I kind of knew like anything that's in this book, people are going to know. Some someday people are going to know I wrote this, even if it's six months after the book comes out. So no, I mean it was. And, and you know, there's really nothing that mean in the book. I mean, if you, you've read it, right, already? Yeah, I mean, there's nothing, you know, there's nothing too, too mean in there, I don't think. Um, that's why you were wondering. There, there used to be mean stuff, right? They were like, where did all the mean stuff go? Um, no, it was, you know, no, not really. It's about the same. And the same thing on the blog. I've tried to be, keep the blog the same without, you know, toning it down. Sorry. I, I was just wondering, what's your favorite post so far that you posted on the, the blog? Wow, in a year and a half, I know there's a lot of them, but um, I actually really like the iPhone post. It's, it's terrible to talk about your own thing. But the day the iPhone shipped, I wrote something saying, you know, today the world has changed, you know. <laughs> the world is day before the iPhone, now, day after, you know. I thought that was like, because to me that kind of captured the insanity that was around that thing. I mean, I like, that's a nice product. I, I had one, Apple, even after it was outed, I called up and they sent me a demo one. And uh, I thought for sure it was going to like blow up or something. But no, it worked. And, <laughs> And it was great, you know, I used it, but I actually wouldn't, I kept carrying my Blackberry and I would, you know, I like carrying the photos, but um, I had difficulty using the keyboard. I mean, it's fine, it's a nice product, but there's a lot of nice, cool products, you know, and, and um, I just thought the, the overblown hype on that was just, and I don't even know if Apple did it or if it was like the people, the customers did it, you know, I mean, Scoble came running out with that thing in his hand, like, you know, like, what was that all about, right? <laughs> Look at me, you know, I bought a product, you know, I gave them my credit card and they sold it to me, you know, like, wow. You know, like, you know, like amazing. Wow, this apple, they rock. You know, like, um, so uh, that was that was one I liked. Um, yeah. I don't know. Any other questions? Uh, sorry. Yes. What is some of your your peers in the media field, like Goldberg? Well, <laughs> well Goldberg, I know, I, I, but I might, like, the Forbes is having this book party in a couple of weeks and they invited all those guys and I'm like, oh shit, like, I, I, and they don't know what I look like, well, maybe they do, I don't think they know, I don't know them, so, um, I don't know, I don't know what Goldberg thinks, I think he gets a kick out of it, you know what I mean, you know, it's not, well, maybe not, uh, Pogue, I've heard that Pogue doesn't really like some of it, um, but other people, like, uh, I did something about Nick Wingfield and, you know, in the voice of Jaws, making fun of Nick Wingfield at the journal, and I heard from somebody who knows him, like, he thought it was great that he, on the same day he had a page one story in the journal, and he got fake steve and he thought that was great, and, you know, he thought that was fantastic. Um, I think Frank Shaw at Wagner Edstrom doesn't really like it. He gets, he gets picked on a lot, and, and see, Frank, Frank thought he was so cool, like, a week before I got outed, Frank sent me a note saying, he put something on his blog saying, you know, the identity of the real fake Steve is about to be exposed. There's enough people who know, and by the, for the for several weeks have been people working in secret and concert together to expose. Blah, blah, blah. And then he emails it to me with this note: "Do you hear the footsteps?" And I was like, Fuck you, right, right, right. And "So, like, okay, Frank, you know." And he was like, "Oh, you know," I was like, "Stick to being a PR guy, Frank." Now, and he was like, "He was like Mr. Investigator," but I knew then. I knew it was up. I knew like, "Oh shit," because he wouldn't have done that. He knew. I knew I'm toast. I'm screwed. Is it? And then, like, sure enough, a week later, Brad Stone got me. But like Brad Stone, I've done some. You know, funny things, making fun of him. I, I did one a couple of weeks ripping on him, but no, he. We we're supposed to have lunch in a couple of weeks. He's cool. He gets it. Most of them are okay. Um, I think. I think most people in the media they they, they understand. I, I haven't had any real bad blowback, except Sun. Sun um, doesn't call me. You know, so everybody else like Dell. Even Dell. Dell called. Uh, he emailed when I went out, and they were like, "Hey, we like your blog." Blah, 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 you know, and um, most most companies did, but Sun. Dead silence. Like no, I think they really don't like the My Little Pony stuff. I think they really, <laughs> really. Who knew? I don't know. You know. I, um, but you know, I'm sure they'll come up with some new, you know, scheme to turn things around—a new ticker symbol or. A, you know, I think they might change their corporate color. It's been from purple. They're going with something new. They're bringing in color consultants to work on that, and that's going to really turn things around. They're going to give more stuff away. They found it. They, they did a poll with their customers and asked them, you know, what, what price point would you like to see? And the customers said zero. And they said, okay, then. We've got to make you happy. That's, um, anyway, sorry, in the back. Yeah, um, you know, part of the universe today, Apple has surpassed the market cap. Isn't that amazing? I know. I, uh, well, these guys told me last night, and this is how I know Microsoft does rule the world, because Charles told me last night at dinner that it was going to happen today. And sure enough, I woke up this morning, you know, Apple ahead of IBM. I was like, Jesus Christ, those Microsoft guys. They know everything. Um, but yeah, no, I think it's amazing. And well, you know, 
IBM, I don't want to get going on IBM because, you know, they didn't talk to me for years and now they, they sort of supposedly do. But, um, uh, yeah, I think it's amazing. I think it's Apple's just on fire these days. I mean, it's incredible. I mean, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's rational. I think it's trading at like 50 times trailing earnings. I, that's a little bit crazy. But, um, you know, they do keep hitting it out of the pocket, these products. I, I don't know. I'd like to know what you guys think about the iPhone. I'd like to... Um, uh, but you can't, well, maybe afterwards we can talk about that. But anyway, so, but yeah, it's amazing. I mean, and it's been, it's, it's great for my blog in the sense that the more Apple's on a tear, I mean, you know, in a sense, the, the you know, more people read my blogs. So. It's inspired. It is. It gives me something to, to feel. I take credit. I like taking credit for it, too. I like writing things where I, you know, in the voice of jobs, you get to say, like, I wrote one last night when I saw the, the chart, just like, again, you're welcome, you know, to the world, you know. <laughs> Yes, yes, you're welcome, you know, and, and he's going to run for president on like a jobs, jobs ticket. That way he doesn't have to, you know, doesn't, doesn't even have to, doesn't have to bother like even trying to order Al Gore around, just, just take the job right out of his hands, you know. Um, like, it, it, it really is fun. I, I became really addictive. If you get to write in the point of view of like this incredible narcissistic egomaniac, like at first it's like you get, you get carried away and it's like really, it's, it's fucked up, but it's like really fun. And, and you just think, you can start thinking of all sorts of things that he takes credit for. But anyway. Um, well, as, as addictive as the experience was, I'm um, just curious from, the, from an insider's perspective on, on being a, a fake blogger, uh, do you see it as kind of a one hit wonder phenomenon, sort of like the million dollar homepage? Yeah. Well, you know, there have been attempts. Like, there's a fake bomber blog, which I don't think is, I, I don't read it that much. I, I, the ones I saw, I wasn't too impressed by. There's a whole company that started up called News Groper that um, wanted me to join them at one point. And they're doing a whole, like, a constellation of fake celebrity blogs. Um, Vanity Fair talked to me at one point about coming in and doing a bunch of, setting up a whole network of, like, five, like a Wall Street fake blog, a Hollywood fake blog. You could sort of see doing it in vertical niches, but um, I think it's more of a one-off. I think it's, it's kind of like... Um, you know, the, the, the writer and the subject have to kind of line up and write, and I just got lucky in the sense that, and I didn't know much about Apple, but I knew a lot about, well, something about tech, I've been covering it, so I couldn't do the same thing, I couldn't do a Michael Eisner fake blog or, uh, you know, or a Hillary fake blog, you know, I, I could try, but I don't think it would work as well, but yeah, it, it could. The one good thing news gropers had, they've only had one good hit so far, but they have a fake Al Sharpton blog, and they did a, <laughs> when Michael Vick got arrested for dog, that dog fighting thing, they had Al Sharpton blog about it saying that this is racist and um, if Michael Vick was a white quarterback who was doing dolphin fighting with dolphins with spears on their heads, um, you know, nobody would have a problem with that, right? So, but, but, but the kicker is, the kicker is that MSNBC, which oh, you guys own, uh, MSNBC picked it up and ran it in a story saying, Reverend Al Sharpton's weighed in today on the Michael Vick scandal. I swear to God, I swear to God they did this, right? And, 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 um, and then... Then Gawker found that and like took the piss out of MSNBC. Next thing you know, the MSNBC story is gone, or it's back with a thing saying a previous version of the story contained. And the, the news grouper guys were like freaking out. They they email I email a lot with them. They were like, dude, check this out, you know. Um, yeah, it was it was pretty good. But I think it's basically a one-off. There were people talking about, oh, this fake news thing could be a whole new thing. I, I don't really think so. But. Yeah, but that's a different, or Colbert. Colbert's doing that one cover, but I don't think you could do like, I, could, I don't think there could be now five other Colbert's doing, you know, weird things. You know, it's just, it's kind of like one thing. I, I don't even know how long the fake Steve thing can go, to be honest. I, it's gone a lot longer than I thought it would, you know? But anyway, I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead. Uh, a while back, you posted uh, something about Larry Lessig and uh. relation to Google. Then you posted a correction. Oh, yeah. On that. And I just wondering, did you really get a real email from Larry Lessig? And I did. Tell him that <laughs> um, I don't think you know Larry Lessig, do you? Yeah, I know. Oh, okay. I don't know. I, I did get an email from him, and he said because I wrote a thing saying that you know he was basically that Google was putting a lot of money into his legal center at Stanford or something, and then on the, uh, and then he was going around and doing these papers or lobbying, basically in effect for changes that would benefit Google. And I sort of made a point of that. And he wrote to me saying, "I love your blog. It's really funny. Blah blah blah." But you know what? And I really think it's fair to take, that I say I take money from Google. I didn't really. They put money into this, uh, the, the center, but, you know, I'm not. So I thought, you know, yeah, okay. He's a lawyer, you know, um, <laughs> with probably lots of free time on his hands, you know. And, um, but also, it just seemed like the decent thing to do. So I wrote a thing saying, you know, Larry Lessig wrote in. He seems like a good guy, and he just wants to be clear. He did, never, he did not ever take any money from Google. It seemed like easy enough for me to correct it, and I, you know, the joke's the same, so, you know, so. But he did, yeah, it really was him. And then he wrote back to me again saying, please don't post this, but um, 
I, it was before anyone who was, I can tell you're not really the real Steve Jobs because he wouldn't have done that. You know, he, he wouldn't have been so nice. And um, so he said, I, you know, I don't know who you are, but yeah, no, he seems like an, an okay guy. I, 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 don't, I don't agree with a lot of the, th the positions he takes on, on uh, uh, copyrights. Or, I, I'm, I'm not a free tard, but, um, but, I, but I, you know, so he's a smart guy. I mean, uh, but anyway, okay. Um, yes? Um, I, I was, <laughs> well, it's just physical resemblance, right? But I was looking at a picture of, of uh, I, was, I, I was looking at a picture of him once and I thought, God, that guy looks like a squirrel, you know? And, uh, and then I, if you, I, did, I do these Google image searches and if you do like squirrel, a search for squirrels, there's like, I don't know who did this, but like, or maybe lots of people, there's a bazillion pictures of squirrels dressed up in funny costumes on the web, right? Like lots of them. You know, squirrels as Marines with rifles and, you know, squirrels in, in you know, gun turrets or, Squirrels in bow ties, and so, so I was like, "Wow!" And there was one of a squirrel with like I think it had glasses, and um, anyway, I thought and it looked just like him. And I thought, "Wow, yeah, like you know, um, that was it. That was uh, it's not very kind, really." But um, but I also somebody I asked him, but I thought, like, you know what? Would I trade places with Eric Schmidt? And the answer is yes, I would. And um, so I figured he could take it. That's what that other people said to me when I when I got out. I got some did some stories. People were like, "Aren't you afraid that Bill Gates would be mad? He got him Beastmaster." I was like. Dude, do you think Bill Gates can handle being called Beastmaster? I think he can handle it. Trust me, I, you know, I, I think he's okay. I think he gets it. It's a joke, you know. I think he probably probably sees that, you know. But um, yeah, no, I, I. But Eric, I don't know. He might be more uh, pissed off. I don't know. I, I'm going to Google. I'm doing three things at Google over the next few weeks, different locations. So, you know, they must have some sense of humor. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> No, no, they've never contacted me at all. Uh, you know, like Moshe and the Hit Squad have never been sent out. Or, you know, as far as I know, my phone isn't tapped. I, I, I no, they, they, um, they, uh, I've never. What's that? You don't know an iPhone. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That. Um, but he said I don't know an iPhone. Um, but uh, no, uh, uh, they never have contacted me at all. In, in, you know, for good or bad. Uh, uh, except that one time I looked. I have this cafe press shop that sells these T-shirts, and I looked one day. And Katie Cotton, who's for real, you know, Steve's handler, had bought a whole bunch of T-shirts from my shop. And I thought, oh, that's a good sign, right? I mean, uh, you know, she, she probably gets the joke. And then she sent word through someone who knew who I was months and months ago, like, you know, it's cool, we like the blog, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I think they're okay with it, but I don't think they're in any big hurry to, like, endorse it or, you know, support it in any way. So there's not much they can do, you know, really. Hey, Andy, two more questions. Okay, sorry, two more questions. Um, anyone? Yes? It seems that since you've been out, of, uh, your posts have been become more prolific, and you're interfacing with the community more, and you're taking submissions from a lot of photos that pop up now. Is that uh, an encouragement of Forbes, or is that something because you have more time to dedicate to it? Um, no. It's it, it, first of all, there's no. Uh, I can't. I can't tell you how little Forbes does has to do with it, like nothing. I mean, I mean, nothing would be too much. I mean, it's really, I mean, no, they're doing a lot to promote it, but like in terms of like how it's written or, you know, nothing, I'm nothing. I mean, they just, which is great. I mean, terrific. They said, they, they said, we, we really, we don't want to mess with it all. Do whatever you want. And I didn't know if I'm being more prolific, but I'm, I'm definitely getting a lot more email from people now. Uh, but that was growing anyway, but now it's really, I get swamped. And um, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. And then apparently it sounded like you got some flack from lesbians, and so you kind of amended your previous posts. I got some flack about what? Uh, some like. Oh, Glaswegians. Yeah. Oh, oh, um, you know, no, I got some flack about using photos. That was it. I got some uh, after the Glasgow store because some people they sent me pictures saying they were being really nice. The Glasgow users group uh, started uh, writing to me before even before the opening saying. We're all going to be there. We'll send you photos, blah, blah, blah. It's okay, cool. And then they sent me pictures, and, and I just used them, or I steered people to Flickr pages, and they wrote to me saying, you know, we'd kind of like it if you cited me. And then uh, I, felt I felt bad, so I said, yeah, you're right. You know, okay, I'll start citing you for photos, and, uh, I, which I should have been doing anyway. And it was kind of like an oversight on my part, because sometimes I'm cranking them out so fast 
I just bam, pop up the photo and I forget. And then since then I've started doing fake photo caption credits to appease people who, I created this guy named Bert Hammer of the Hammer Agency. And um, so it looks like they're real, either real photos, but there's no, you know, there's no Bert Hammer. Um, and he, Bert Hammer works for a lot of different magazines, like Muscle Bear. Waz is always pictured from Muscle Bear magazine. And, um, <laughs> and John Schwartz is always from Groovy Tail. And uh, uh, so... Or Noe Valley Wine Spectator, I think is the other one. It was a Noe Valley, Noe, Noe Valley Wine and Jogging Aficionado or something. But, uh, uh, but no, but, so I'm trying to do better with the photos. And I have people, I, I now have guys who do a lot of Photoshop work, and they'll send me stuff in, like funny stuff. Or I can say to them, could you do, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, and they'll, they'll work it up for me, which is kind of cool, because I don't, you know, have the time or the ability to do that. Anyway, sorry, wait out at the end. No. No, honestly, I, I was shocked. I mean, because I, early on, I mean, from the very early, I, like, a lot of people from Microsoft, not a lot, but Microsoft people would write to the blog all the time. But, um, uh, and Sun people, like My Little Pony came out of Sun. I was calling him Ponytail Boy, or, or yeah, Ponytail Boy. And then uh, someone wrote to me saying, dude, you know, we call him My Little Pony. If you're going to do it, do it right, because <laughs> that's our name. And uh, so... I think, I think the Sun people don't, you know, a lot of them don't like him too much. So that was actually a Sun name. But no, um, Apple people, I think, honestly, I, 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 it, it, so, so, so silent that it's actually, I was taken aback by it because I actually think it said a lot about the reign of terror there that, like, people didn't feel free to write. Because honestly, I, I've never, until recently, because I'm going up to do a, a reading in San Francisco and somebody wrote to me saying, a bunch of us are coming up from Cupertino and, you know, we want to hang out after the reading uh, in, next, in San Francisco. But, no, I've never had people co like, you know, oh, we're going to be releasing this, that, and, like, and I don't really want, I don't want to do like, you know, um, little rumors about what the next product, I don't really care about that, that you know, what the next product is going to be. So, but no, I never get it. But I do think that they are terrified. I think they're, they're really very, very tight ship. So, I think that's it, right? Okay. Thank you. Uh,